So um, the reading is from Matthew chapter 25, starting at verse 14, the parable of the talents. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents of money, to another two talents, and to another one talent, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received the five talents went at once and put his money to work and gained five more. So also the one with the two talents gained two more. But the man who had received the one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received the five talents brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five talents. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with the two talents also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two talents. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received the one talent came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your talent in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I had not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when, that when I returned I would have received it back with interest. Take the talent from him and give it to the one who has the ten talents. For everyone who has will be given more, and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, everyone. Good morning once again. And this morning, I want to bless God for the privilege of getting into his word and learning at his feet, sharing with you something that you all are probably aware of. So we'll be sharing on the topic of expressing ourselves and letting God use our abilities for his utmost glory. Over the last few weeks, we have been studying on ways we can equip ourselves as a church. And I really, really bless God for those series of studies. From the frontline services, we learned a lot. We learned about how to be more effective wherever we are, in our places of work, our residents, within our families, even in our church. Because as we are all different, our front lines may be different. We learned that we are God's elect, and we looked at First Peter 1-2. We learned that we're brought together, and each Sunday we come together to learn at Jesus' feet so that we can be scattered to go into the world in order to make a difference wherever we are, whatever we do. About two weeks ago, we had the privilege of learning about the fact that we are the aroma of God. I don't know about you, but I love sweet perfumes. And I love when I pass by someone who's, who is radiating an aroma that just makes my heart swell with joy. 
And what, listening to that message, I thought about myself. How do I radiate the aroma, the sweet aroma of God? Last week, we came together once again. We learned about the awesome power of God. That he's a God of wonder. And we looked at the word in Micah to glorify God. And it set me thinking, even though I had chosen this topic way ahead of that, I am in a season of preparation. Lent is about preparing myself. The same way that Jesus prepared himself for the cross. And I looked back at the cross and looked back at the sacrifice of God through Christ Jesus. And I turned to this parable and I asked myself, how can we prepare ourselves just like these servants prepared themselves to await the return of their master? And Lent is a good time for that reflection, a time when we can create the space to actually think about why am I here? What am I doing here? How can I use the talents, the abilities, the blessings, the investments that God has put in me in order to enrich his kingdom? In particular today, we focus on the fact that there is this man who went on a journey, but before doing that, he invested and entrusted several talents, abilities, whatever you may want to call it, into his servants. So we will be looking at that to unpack lessons for ourselves as we wait for the return of Christ. But before we go and delve deep into these passages, what I want us to first of all highlight are a few preliminary points. First, is the fact that this parable links into all the teachings of Jesus on living a prepared life. As children of God, we need to be prepared. I always, I've heard a passage or a proverb where people say, the graveyard is where the biggest deposits of life are. And it makes me sad. That shouldn't be. We should be going to the graveyard empty of everything that God has deposited in us because that means we have lived. So, all the teachings of a prepared life that Jesus gave us, especially when we look at the book of Matthew, centers around so many things. Here, in the book of Matthew, Jesus talks about being like the wise virgins rather than the unprepared wise virgins, or unprepared virgins who did not have oil. He also talked about us being likened to good soil instead of bad soil. He talked about us being likened to the diligent servants in this passage. Second, this is a parable. And like all parables, there is always something to learn. Parables remind us about what we ought to do and how we ought to live. Importantly, going back a little step before our text for the day in Matthew 25, we look at Matthew 24, which reminds us in verse 42 that we should watch because we do not know the hour that our Lord will come. Verse 36 reminds us to be ready, because, again, we do not know when he's coming. We also note that um, while this is a parable, there are many interpretations that could be given to it, depending on people's theological positions. However, today I will not focus on those theological positions, but rather on the lessons that it prevents to help us express our abilities 
to manifest and grow God's kingdom to his glory. So let's turn to the passage once again. It starts by saying, again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one, he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. We note that the man who had received five bags went at once, immediately, put his money to work, and gained five bags more. Similarly, the one with two bags went and gained more, but the one who had received one bag went, perhaps like some of us, out of fear, dug the ground and put the master's money in there. This makes me to think, have I been entrusted with resources, with abilities from God, with talents from God, with opportunities from God? And how am I using those talents, opportunities, resources, while preparing and waiting for God's kingdom to come? Because no matter how long, God is coming back through Jesus. I note that many of us are familiar with the parable, but I do believe that today, as a church, and as we sang through many of the songs this morning, we can encourage each one of us to discover, to even search, and to even refresh maybe lost talents. But first, I want to highlight the point that irrespective of what you may think about not having a talent or having a talent, the reality is that God has deposited talents in every one of us. Romans 12, 6 to 8 reminds us that we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. For some of us, it is serving, and I'm really grateful for the pandas. For some of us, it is teaching. I'm grateful for so many people who have had the opportunity to come here, teach, and to enable me to learn from what to teach. For some, it is to encourage. Thank you, pastoral care team, for all that you do in encouraging us. For some, it is giving. Thank you for your gift of generosity. For some, it is in leading. Thank you to those who lead, especially to the deacons, the home group leaders, and other ministry areas. It is for the fact that we must do this diligently and cheerfully. That's when the rewards come. But perhaps I've highlighted through this number of gifts, and you are looking at yourself and wondering, am I really entrusted with a gift from God? Yes, you are. As I was saying with the children's talk, even a smile is a gift. I have been down on some occasions, and then somebody just smiles at me. It lifts my heart. Similarly, a warm hug, especially in the early COVID days when we were all so scared to even, you know, stretch out our hands to each other. You know, the elbow touch made a connection. We had the little young boys here demonstrating their talents. You know, perhaps like them, you might feel, no, I don't really have much. But you do. You do. No matter how you feel, the truth is, as I've stated, God gives us resources, abilities. Some might be more obvious than others, like the worship this morning. 
beautiful songs, beautiful playing, beautiful service. Thank you to them. But others might be less obvious. Some people came here early in the morning to clean up, to arrange the tea, to set up technical. It might not be that obvious. The key thing is, have I given myself the time and opportunity to reflect about what God has put me to do in the church and in the body of Christ? If I have, have I made opportunity to increase and to enlarge upon that gift? Perhaps you haven't given much thought to it before. This is another opportunity to do so. One of the things that um, while I was preparing for this message, I was asking God, I said, Lord, do you know the demography of the church? Perhaps someone might say, oh, I'm too elderly to give much. And he took me to Job 12.12. 12. Wisdom belongs to the age and understanding to the old. The elderly ones, your wisdom is fantastic. I do know that as someone who is growing in my faith, when you share certain experiences of your journey with Christ, it blesses my heart. And I almost feel like, Amma, you haven't started anything yet. So, please never think that you're too old to continue expressing your talents. You express it so well, and the Lord reward you for your service. 1 Corinthians 4.16 says, While you may be outwardly wearing out, inwardly you are renewed day by day. And it's such a blessing to know that irrespective of the physical pains that many of our elderly ones might be experiencing, they are so active praying for us. But are you among those who are praying? Are you among those who are encouraging? Are you among those who are giving to the Lord? If not, like the two faithful servants, maybe this is a time to rethink and express your ability for the utmost glory of God's kingdom. Another reflection point is that the man who had received five bags of gold went at once. Similarly, the one who had received two went immediately. We can see those in 16 to 18. Interestingly, the narration here represents how many of us deal with these resources. Some of us are very eager well and good. Some of us need prompting. As a church, perhaps we need to think, how do we help and support those that are eager to express and those that may be on the quiet side about their expressing their gifts? Do we give them the opportunity to flourish? May the Lord help us to do right by them. May the Lord help us to invest and express our abilities immediately, generously, and prayerfully. However, it is sad when we look at the third servant. Verse 25 says, I was afraid and went and hid your gold in the ground. In some ways, this could represent how many of us deal with the resources, abilities, talents that God has given us. The question is, do you ever hide God's abilities in you out of fear? I know I sometimes do. I know I'm sometimes shy. 
But today we will pray that God would give us the strength to express those abilities in the way he wants us to. Nelson Mandela, in his 1994 inaugural speech, said something. He said, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frighten us. We ask ourselves, and perhaps, like Moses, you do ask yourself sometimes, who am I? to be brilliant? Who am I to be talented? Who am I to be the person that God would have do this job? But the reality is, we were born to manifest the glory of God. That is within us. It is not just in some of us. It is in every one of us. And as we let our light shine, we Consciously, as we let our light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Can you think about what it would be like if the whole church expressed all of God's abilities that he's deposited in each of us for his utmost glory. It would be wonderful, wouldn't it be? Because we'll come here and there'll be so many expansions in terms of God having his way to do whatever he will do. There will be so many expressions of the beauty of God. And beyond building the world for God's kingdom, we look at verses 21 to 23 of this passage to learn a number of beautiful things. Commendations from the master. First, we see a verbal commendation. It says, well done good and faithful servant. I don't know about you, but when I'm marking the scripts of my students, I do what is called a sandwich approach, where I find it rewarding for myself and for the student to really celebrate the great things they have done in their essays. And I think when we meet God, both God himself And ourselves will be pleased when he says those words to us. Well done, good and faithful servants. But even before we meet God, we see another commendation here. The man or the master told his servant, you have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. I have seen it personally in my life. When you take that first step of expressing your ability for God's glory, he multiplies it. It's not by your strength. But God surely does extend beyond you. Now notice the final commendation to them. He says, come and share your master's happiness. Isn't that just wonderful? That we will not only receive verbal commendation from the Lord, we will not only receive service capacity to serve him even more and even eternally, but that we will enter into the very joy of the Lord himself. Such comforting words. I wonder, is this something you like to share in? And as we just oppose this pleasant situation, we see this servant, the last one, who went, unfortunately, 
out of fear and failed to express his abilities for God's utmost glory. We see the master saying in verse 26, You wicked, lazy servant, so you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I return, I would have received it back with interest. Sadly, we see a completely different position. We see a situation where the master goes from being happy with some of the servants to being very, very sad with the servant who failed to express his abilities. My prayer is that God helps us not to be this last servant. This should serve as a warning to us as to how we use the investments or abilities that God has deposited in us. We should note that our reward, however, is not based on on how much we have, but how we use our abilities. Like the faithful servants in this parable, we must take the resources that God has deposited in us and express them for his utmost glory in different areas of our life and in our church. We must go forth to spread the gospel. We must build spiritual gifts. We need to give our time to serve others in worship, in prayers, in music, in leadership, in serving tea. Thank you, pandas, for your hard work. The good thing is there is somewhere you can express your ability for God's glory. To summarize, the key points from Matthew 25, 14 to 30, are God gives each of us abilities. There is a reward for using them well there is a warning for not using them well. It's a familiar passage, but it's one that helps us to reflect. And as I round up, I am reminded of the words of a beautiful song, which says, take my life and let it be consecrated today. Take my moments and my days Let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my king. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a might would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power as you choose. Here am I, all of me. Take my life, it's all for thee. Take my will and make it thine. It shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine. It shall be thy royal throne. Take my love, my Lord, I pour out your feet. It's treasure store. Take myself, I will be ever only, all for thee. And perhaps you may want to join me in a few prayers as we round up. You know yourself. Just take a few moments and recommit your life to God before we take the congregational prayers. And ask God that he will help you to be like this faithful servant, to express your abilities for his 
utmost glory. I invite us to pray together now. Dear Lord, we give you thanks for all your investments in our lives. Our hearts are truly overwhelmed when we consider all that you are and how you have entrusted so much to us. May we be grateful for all your blessings. May we be a people who were unafraid to live as fully as you want us to live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us to multiply all that you have given to us, to use the gifts and resources to bless lives. Help us to be faith-filled and to desire to increase your glory and your goodness in this world. Make us willing to share all that you have invested in us. Lord. Finally, dear Lord, we pray for our church. We pray that each person would discover, develop, and use all their gifts, those of nature and those of grace. In Jesus' name, amen. And Lord, we thank you for these words. Blessed be your holy name. Amen.